stars with me There's always a story behind the menu Every day a different menu It's bound to be an adventure when you Savor the flavors with me Oh, savor the flavors with me Welcome to Savor the Flavors. My name is Brittany Allen and today I'm in Rockford, Illinois. There's a definite chill in the air, the coldest day I've felt so far this year. And so I'm thinking comfort food is in order. German comfort food, that is. Today for lunch, I've chosen De Rathskeller. It's the oldest restaurant in Rockford, Illinois, still operating in its original location. They've been serving their German cuisine in an intimate old world setting since 1931. As soon as I walked in, it reminded me of some place I've been before. Last time I was in Germany, I'd been traveling about a week and I needed to do some laundry. So I dropped my laundry, went across the street to a Rathskeller, walked inside, and sat at a table designated for drinking only. And there was a little fella sitting at the table, and uh, he was having his beer, singing a song. It didn't seem to phase any of the other patrons. And my brother-in-law was with me, and he told the guy that I was a singer too and suggested that the two of us sing a song together. So the little fella started singing a song in German. I recognized the melody and sang along in English to the beer barrel polka. I just love how you come in a place like this and it'll bring a memory like that back. What a great start to my lunch. All of the entrees come with a choice of two sides and a soup or salad. I chose the salad because I love how it's presented. It comes with the dried crumbled blue cheese and also a hot bacon vinaigrette, which reminds me of how my mom used to make dressing. It's basically a vinegar oil combination with bacon in it, served over the greens. I serve myself a little bit of that dressing. Woo! Wonderful. Oh, the little bacon bits in there. And I'm going to take some of this blue cheese. I love blue cheese. So this, this salad is made for me. <laughs> Get a bite here. Get some of the dressing, some lettuce. They've got mushrooms, carrots, onions, everything on this salad. This is like a trip back home for me. To Minnesota, that is, because I love this kind of dressing with the blue cheese. It's so cool when you can go to a place, and so far they've taken me back to Germany and to Minnesota, and I'm sitting at a restaurant in Rockford, Illinois, but I love it. For my entree, I ordered the Schwein Schnitzel and the Lionized Potatoes. Lionized Potatoes are basically fried potatoes with onion, and I heard they make them in these old cast iron skillets here. Makes them the best. The edges get nice and brown and crispy. I'm actually going to try them first. Mm. Oh, wow. This is comfort food. So just like my mom used to make them. In a cast iron skillet, too, by the way. Mmm. Delish. Now, the Schwein schnitzel. Basically, it's a pork cutlet that's been breaded and then cooked on a griddle. Perfect season. Mm. Still tender. Yummy. German comfort food at its best right here. And this colorful stuff is red cabbage. It's been cooked. It smells wonderful. Get a taste of that. Ooh, it's hot. Mmm. It's got a nice little tang to it. What a great combination of flavors. They sure know how to do it here at Der Raskeller. can have a way of transporting you, sort of taking you back to another time and place, or triggering a memory maybe of where you first had the dish 
or the person that made it for you. And that was the case for me at de Rathskeller. Of course, my lunch experience reminded me of times I've spent in Germany, but it also reminded me of certain everyday dishes that my mother and grandmother used to make when I was growing up. And ironically, those everyday dishes have sort of become special occasion dishes for me now, because every time I make them, I'm reminded of people that I love. And today I wanted to invite you into my kitchen as I prepare for you my recipe for Wiener Schnitzel, along with fried potatoes and onions just like mom used to make and also a lettuce salad with grandma's homemade hot bacon vinaigrette. Today we're going to start by rendering the bacon for our hot bacon vinaigrette. I've got a cast iron skillet heating on the stove and we're going to render the bacon in there because I'm going to use some of the bacon fat in our fried potatoes and onions. For my bacon I have three slices of thick cut bacon and you'll want to use thick cut bacon for this. This just so happens to be applewood smoked because I love that flavor in this recipe. Now we're going to take our bacon and cut it in half and then cut our halves in half again lengthwise. And then we're going to cut it in little pieces and you want to sort of get uniform pieces because as you're rendering it you want it to cook evenly. You don't want some pieces that are burnt and other pieces that are undercooked. Okay, now we're going to take our bacon and drop it in our skillet. And we're going to render it at medium or medium low because we want to render it nice and slowly. We don't want it to burn and I don't want grease spattering all over my cook job. While the bacon is rendering, we're going to work on some of the vegetables for our meal. We're going to start with the lettuce. Now, my grandmother usually used leaf lettuce fresh from her garden or frisee, or in the winter months she would buy iceberg at the grocery store. And for this, I like to use a more hearty green. If you use something too delicate, you have to remember that the vinaigrette is going to be hot when we pour it over the top. And if it's too delicate, it may wilt the lettuce too much. Today I'm choosing to use romaine and for four people I like one head of romaine and I'm just going to cut it into pieces that are manageable for you to spear with a fork when you're eating it. Okay, that is our romaine and I also like to use radicchio. Now, I love it for the color. Radicchio is actually the same thing as Italian chicory and when it's grown properly they can grind the root as an additive for coffee or in some parts of the world a replacement for coffee. However today we're interested in the leaves and for this I'm just going to use half a head and it has a core in it so we're just going to cut that core out because we don't want that part. Like that. And we're going to cut this a little thinner than the romaine because I sort of want ribbons that will run through and around the romaine. And we can put that in there and just sort of break it up. It's going to be so pretty. The more color you can get on the plate, the better, right? Now, we're making a hot bacon vinaigrette, so there has to be vinegar for a salad dressing. And so I chose apple cider vinegar. It's what Grandma always used. And then Grandma always added sugar, and she would use like white granulated sugar. I started using brown sugar, and I just love the extra layer of flavor that you get from the molasses. And we're just gonna dissolve the vinegar, or rather the sugar, into the vinegar. And we'll use that for our dressing. And I love these flavors with that apple and smoked bacon. Ooh, this is delicious. Very simple, but delicious. Okay, now the potatoes for our fried potatoes and onions. We're just going to slice them, and I want them in about, oh, I would say half inch, or maybe a little less, about quarter inch wide slices. Now what I did is I par-cooked these earlier and I used russet potatoes and I usually allow about a half pound per person. Okay, our potatoes are ready to go and it's time to check our bacon and it has rendered out beautifully. What I'm going to do is remove the bacon to this paper towel lined plate to drain nicely. And then I'm going to pour the bacon fat into this little saucepan I have here for our vinaigrette. Just like that. And you'll get about a tablespoon of the bacon fat. 
what sort of clings to the pan, we're going to keep in there because I want to use that when we make our fried potatoes and onions. Now, I'm going to wash our lettuce and come back and show you how to make Wiener Schnitzel. So I have my oven preheated to 200 degrees. In there I have a baking pan with a baking rack placed on top of it. We're going to cook the Wiener Schnitzel in batches and so I can keep it warm in the oven until we're ready to serve it. And the reason I put the baking rack on top of the baking pan is I want the warm air in the oven to circulate all the way around the Wiener Schnitzel which will keep the coating nice and crispy while it's warming. I also have a skillet warming on the stove with about a half inch of vegetable oil in it. I went to my butcher and I got some veal cutlets and then I brought them home and I pounded them very thin and I did this by placing the cutlets in between plastic wrap and then pounding them with my kitchen mallet or hammer the flat side until I got them the thickness that I wanted and that is about a quarter inch thick. Now I'm going to lightly salt and pepper all of our veal and I have my breading station set up. I've got flour, egg whites, and a breadcrumb mixture. And I seasoned that. I put them in the food processor with some paprika and some garlic powder and salt and came up with my panko mixture. Now, to bread these, we're going to start in the flour, go to the egg white, and then the panko mixture. Now, I remember vividly the first time I had Wiener Schnitzel. I was in Germany. I had gone over there with a band, or as part of a band, on a tour for the Department of Defense. And we were playing at an Armed Forces Recreational Facility. And the first day we got there, of course, I hit the ground running. I had to savor the flavors, right? And so the first thing I ordered was Wiener Schnitzel. I had heard of it, never had it before. I don't think I'd ever had veal before. And, of course, I tried it, and I loved it. I thought it sounded exotic, and, well, maybe it is when you're in Germany, but it's really a very simple dish, traditional dish, but delicious. When I'm cooking, I like to layer flavors. For instance, we lightly salted and peppered the veal, then we seasoned the panko mixture, and now I want to season our vegetable oil. I want to infuse it with some garlic. I've got three garlic cloves here that have been sort of smashed, and we're just going to drop them into the oil. And we're going to fry them until they get just a light golden brown. Now we're just going to remove the garlic cloves and discard them. And it's time to fry our beer schnitzel. We'll get the first one in the pan. Look at that. Bubbling. Perfect. And basically, we just want to flip it once. Keep in mind that these are very thin, so it'll just take probably a couple minutes on each side. is warming in the oven and now it's time to get on to our fried potatoes and onions. I have my cast iron skillet warming on the stove with that residual bacon fat. To that I'm going to add a half cup of diced onion, preferably sweet onion, and we're just going to saute that till it's nice and translucent. saucepan, remember we have the rest of our bacon fat. I've got it warming and it's about a tablespoon in there and to that I'm going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. We want about three tablespoons total oil for our vinaigrette. Once the oil is hot we're going to add one shallot, finely minced. And then to that, we want to add our vinegar and brown sugar mixture. And we've got a vinaigrette going here. We're just going to keep that on warm until we're ready to use it. The 
onions are looking nice and translucent, and it's time to add the potatoes. And we're just going to take them and put them in a layer in the pan, just sort of spread them out evenly. And what we're going to do is resist the temptation to stir because we want them to get nice and caramelized and the edges to get brown. And if you stir them too much, it's not going to happen. So just leave them alone until they're nice and brown and crispy. I like to add a little salt and pepper. Of course, we have to season our potatoes. Okay, I think it's time to stir those potatoes. We've been patient, right? Let's see. Oh yeah, look at all the wonderful golden brown crispy edges we're getting on there. Oh my gosh, perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. They're turning out perfectly. Now, I like my Wiener Schnitzel Hamburg style, which means that it has a sunny side egg on top. If you don't like a sunny side egg, you might want to skip this step. But if you like a sunny side egg, you'll probably never have Wiener Schnitzel without it again. So I'm just going to quickly fry up an egg and then I'm going to come back and show you how to plate this. our wonderful German inspired meal. The first thing we have to do is dress our salad. Now earlier I took a garlic clove and rubbed it around the inside of the bowl for the lettuce and I love this because it just imparts a subtle garlic flavor into the salad. My mother taught me that and it works wonderfully. Now that hot bacon vinaigrette. I'm just going to take that and pour it over the top like that. Lovely, still nice and hot. And then I'm going to take some of our bacon bits, remember those, put those in there, and we'll salt and pepper. Got to season the salad. And then we'll toss it ever so lightly. And as you're tossing it, the lettuce leaves sort of pick up that garlic from the side of the bowl and that flavor gets working throughout the salad. This is so pretty and it smells so good. And I think we're almost there. Yeah, there we go. Now to plate this, I love to start with a mound of those awesome fried potatoes and onions, just like mom used to make. We'll get quite a bit on there. Oh yeah, they turned out just perfectly. It must be the pan. Okay. Then, I like to take, of course, a piece of our Wiener Schnitzel and just sort of drape that across it like that. Look at how beautiful it is. And don't forget about our sunny side egg. I'm having mine hamburg style, and we want to just lay it on top, but we don't want to break our yolk just yet. There we go. And then we need a little lemon to go along with it. Traditionally you serve lemon with Wiener Schnitzel and now our salad to go along with it. And we want to make sure that it's um, drained. We don't want the vinaigrette running out all over our plate. But look at how beautiful and colorful this plate is. I'm telling you, gorgeous. Wow, look at that. Actually, I think I'm going to move my lemon Maybe up over there in the middle. What do you think? <laughs> and you can always take just a little bit of parsley if you want to dust it, especially the potatoes. Maybe around the plate. Lovely. And on our salad, remember at Duraskeller they had the blue cheese? I'm telling you, Grandma didn't use blue cheese. But if she had had lunch with me at Duraskeller, <laughs> she would be putting blue cheese on her salad. It is just so yummy, so creamy, and so good. Now, I'm going to go pick out a wine and be right back to taste this. The 
wine I chose for today is a Gruner Veld Liener. It's a very popular grape in Austria, and as it turns out, Wiener Schnitzel is pretty popular in Austria too. When I was in Germany for the tour with the band, we also spent some time in Salzburg, and I got to taste some wonderful Gruner Veld Liener there. And it's sort of an obvious pairing, but they were made to go together. Now you may have noticed I'm wearing an apron today. I don't generally wear one, though my grandmother always did, and she passed away a few years ago. And this past Thanksgiving, my Aunt Betty came to visit, and she brought one of my grandmother's aprons for each of my sisters and myself. And it's such a wonderful keepsake, and I like wearing it from time to time because it sort of feels like I'm being hugged by Grandma when I tie it around me. And with that, I think we should try Grandma's dish first. Let's get into this salad. Ooh, some of that blue cheese, a little bacon, a little romaine, radicchio. I think I've got it all going on right, in, right there in one bite. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. There's still a nice crunch to the lettuce. The blue cheese is so creamy, so delicious. The vinaigrette, nice and light. I love that apple with bacon in there. Wow. I could eat like a whole bowl of that. In fact, when we turn the cameras off, I might, I might finish it up. And Let's move on though to these potatoes. Oh my gosh, they're perfect. They're so nice and soft, but the edges are crispy. Mmm. And because we par-cooked them, they were able to take on that bacon flavor and the onion. Mmm. Delicious. Now, Wiener Schnitzel, Hamburg style. You have to cut open that yolk and let all that wonderful golden goodness spill out over it. Mmm, beautiful. Now, let's cut into a piece of this. Get a little bit of that egg yolk on there. It's perfectly cooked, still looks nice and tender and moist on the inside. Oh, and it is. Mmm. The Wiener Schnitzel is so tender and the breading is perfect, just light and crispy. I think I'm going to have a little lemon go back for another piece. This is just delightful. If you haven't tried a sunny side egg, this might be a good way to try one for the first time. Oh my gosh. Now, this wine. Let's see. Mm. Like I said, they were made to go together. It has sort of um, some mineral notes, a little grassy. So crisp, dry, delicious. Goes so well with this. You know what? The apron is like being hugged by Grandma, but I gotta tell you, when I eat these dishes, it's like being hugged from the inside out. I'm so glad you joined me today on my little trip down memory lane, and I hope it inspires you to try my recipes or maybe some of your family's favorites that you haven't had in a long time. And if you don't know how to make them, spend some time with someone who does. I find sharing recipes is such a wonderful way of connecting with people. The recipes from today's show are available on my website, savortheflavors.tv. Also there is a complete list of the brand names of products I use, as well as additional wine pairing suggestions. Now whether you visit Durant Scaler, try my recipes, or rediscover some family favorites of your own. Either way, I hope you take time to savor the flavors.